Marquise Chris, Jamal Murray, Buddy Heald, Jacob Jacob Hodel, and my boy Scal, who I had going to the Raptors. But you have going high. Well, I think has probably the biggest bust potential in the draft. Really? More, yeah. more than Buddy Heald? I think Buddy Heald is the more safe pick, right? I mean, this will be interesting now, because now I think... And the wild card in the draft is always sacramental because you really never know. You know that they're going to kind of screw do. everything up, right? They're going to make a silly pick, and or they'll make a silly trade. It will be either or. And I could see New Orleans. New Orleans kind of have to take Buddy Heald or Murray now. I think I think Murray's now a lock to go to the Pelicans. Which what I said in our WhatsApp group was probably the best possible thing for Murray, right? You put him with arguably maybe the most talented player in the league in Anthony Davis. Yeah. And you give spacing to that team who desperately needs it. And, and in, then, my, in my mock, which is um, all wrong except for the first two picks, uh, the only two picks I got right were Simmons and Ingram. But in my mock, I had Murray going to Minnesota um, and Heald going to the Pelicans. So, you know, based on that, I'm thinking Murray's going to end up in New Orleans. I think that's going to be a lock pick now. Yeah, original, I'll go through my top ten right now. It's Simmons going first, Ingram two, Jamal Murray three to Boston, Marquise Chris at four, Bender at five, Heald to New Orleans. That Jalen Brown at seven going to Denver, um, and then I had Deontay Murray going to Sacramento. Who, to be honest, if Chris Dunn was available, I think Sacramento it's it's a shoe when they take him because they need a point guard. Um, Ray John Rondo's done and uh, calls him with that domestic abuse problem. Yeah. So like they they have some real issues there. They already have a shitload of big men, and then. Um, yeah, at 9, I had Scott LeBissier, and then at 10, Malik Beasley going to Milwaukee, who might be like a Wes Matthews kind of guy. That's some comparisons that I've seen. And uh, with Jason Kidd there, and they had Carter Williams running the point, they need some shooters, so maybe that maybe that's a good pick for them if he's still there. But it's going to be gonna be interesting to see now, like we said, a couple guys slide, a couple reaches, and now we're here with uh, New Orleans, and maybe Canada's... Canada's newest NBA son is going to go to a solid team. Pelicans are a team that we had going to the playoffs going into the last yeah. season and, you know, ran into, obviously, injuries everywhere. But, hey, if they get Jamal Murray, a guy who averaged 20 points at Kentucky, which I don't know the last player to do that. He might have been the first, to be honest, since Coach Cal's been there. The guy that can fill up the score sheet. Oh, yeah. Jason Williams telling us right now he's the most dynamic point guard in the league, Chris Dunn, for sure. But questions about his shooting, for sure like most players coming in the league. And he's really good in transition. Minnesota might yeah. be one of the best transition teams in the league. Yeah, and he's, he beats his man at will. He's one of those guys that can just take guys off the dribble. Kind of like a really young important. Jamal Crawford, maybe. Yeah, with he's, that got, he's got as good a handle as you'll see in this draft. And he's got the quickness and athleticism to finish at the rim. Um, so, with a team like Minnesota, you're going to have a lot of guys who are going to be able to get to the free throw line penetrate and score at will. The question is, with the new NBA, do they have enough shooters around them um, to keep defenses honest and you know not necessarily playing off these guys and forcing them to shoot uh, and take those uncontested three-pointers or, or you know long-range twos? Because yeah, looking at Minnesota's roster, Rubio, Jang, Wiggins, Levine, Towns, and you're going to have Pekovic, who didn't really play. Um, Nemanja Jelica, was that his name? The guy that you yeah. like from overseas. Really good shooter who didn't get much time last year. Maybe he gets some time this year because they need shooting. And that's what he can bring you. And uh, Shabazz and Tyus Jones. Pretty good young team. I guess that's an yeah. understatement. It's almost all under 25. So I think it's probably if the youngest, if one of the youngest, or if not the youngest roster in the NBA. Um, so obviously they they have a lot of problems moving forward. Chris Dunn's a junior, so he's coming in with a bit of experience, uh, 21 years old. So when you look at it from an age standpoint, he, as of right now, he's the same age as Wiggins and Levine. Are, so. um, if you're the Pelicans right now, they're on the clock. Do you take Murray or do you take be, Heald? This has to be Murray. I'm going to say Jamal Murray, too. Let's see what happens. There we wow. Go. So we've been, and they screwed that so, up. The Raptors so, fans are, live another day. <laughs> Live so, another day. We've missed on every pick other than the first two. Am I right? Yeah. The only one I got right was Bender when I called it. 
But and that wasn't even in your mom. That wasn't even in my mom. But I just called it because I just wow. had a feeling. Buddy, I, think that, I think that New Orleans is really going to regret this pick. Not to say that Buddy Hill isn't going to be solid. I think he's going to be a good three-point shooter. They had Jimmer Fredette on the team, who's the guy that I kind of compared him to, just in the sense where they seem one-dimensional. Um, better handle, obviously, and all that kind of stuff. But I don't, what's Buddy Hill ceiling for you? What, what's like his best case now? <laughs> Is he even a JJ Redick in his best case scenario? I would say a JJ Redick, who he reminds me of. I think he has better ability to finish at the rim than JJ Redick, um, and I think he's just as good a shooter. Like to me, that's probably the safest comparison. Um, I would say probably, probably a JJ Redick. Yeah, I think that's a safe comparison. You think they're gonna regret this pick, or you think he's gonna have a pretty good career? I think he's gonna have a pretty good career. I think he's a good player. Jamal Murray. And the thing with him, what I like about him is he takes threes or he finishes at the rim. He's like Steph Curry, not in the same way. And I'm, not, I'm not comparing him to Steph Curry by any means. But he's he has the same game with Steph Curry where he's either finishing right at the rim or he's taking three-pointers. He doesn't have that mid-range game. Um, but what I love about this guy is his tenacity, his aggressiveness, his willingness to win. He showed that in March Madness. If you have Listen. that, if you have that kind of mentality, there's going to be a place for you in the league. He's, whether whether he's just a three point specialist or like a borderline all star, that remains to be seen. And um, he has a pretty good handle. He's not just your. He's not. He's oh, no yeah. Kyle Korver where he's pretty much a liability everywhere else. He can create his own shot. Yeah. And we saw that in the tournament. Yeah. We saw it a couple highlights here. Rashawn Leonard. Remember him, Raptors fans? He's he good. won that three point shootout with Denver, I'm pretty sure. He was a bit of a selfish player on the Raptors, though, wasn't he? He was, like he a lot a of little, other Raptors. He, little, uh, <laughs> he, was, he was one of those uh, Mike snap James. that I'm on the Raptors for. To get a next contract? Time. I'm working to my next contract. He was one of those guys. Um, not to say he wasn't good, but uh, that's a decent comparison. I think he's more of a JJ Reddick, but better finisher at the rim. I think you'll see him drive to the basket, get to the free throw line a lot more than you see J.J. Reddick. Um, also, shout out to the uh, Caribbean folks on the OTB. Uh, Bahamanian, <laughs> Buddy Heel just got drafted. Shout out Mike Roach, shout out Brandon Graham, shout out Ron Davis, Uncle Ron. Shout out the whole Caribbean. <laughs> last, last Bahamian in the, in the NBA, off top of your head, Zane. You yeah, got me stumped on this one. I'll give you a hint. Canadian. Partially Canadian. Rick NBA Fox. title, Rick Fox. <laughs> he doesn't count. Come on. Why not? He didn't even play for Team Canada. I don't even count him as Canadian. He was a, another, he was, he was a sellout. Another man from Bahamas, Michael Thompson. Clay's dad. Oh, yeah. Only other Bahama person I know that played in the league. <laughs> Okay, so I want to stick with Jamal Murray right now because uh, we are Canadian. Where do you think that he goes? you think that, uh, you know what? Maybe Sacramento takes him and makes him their point guard. They've taken a Canadian before. The um, Nick Stauskas. Yeah. And then traded him instantly because they thought they were going to get a max player and they traded but him for nothing. Let's look at this. You can have Buddy Heald. I think you could even insert Buddy Heald into the starting lineup on New Orleans and have... Tyreek Evans come off as a sixth man. Because I think Tyreek Evans' ideal situation on a team would be as a sixth man coming and giving that scoring punch off the bench. If he's healthy. Ideal. Right? Um, you have guys like Eric Gordon who are really. Gordon's a free helped. agent, I'm pretty sure. I don't think they're going to re sign him. Um, Drew Holiday, if he stays healthy, solid player. Ryan Anderson, Ryan I'm Anderson. Sure another free agent, yeah. solid player. I like him a lot. All but. of these guys, the thing with New Orleans is if healthy with every single guy on their roster. I mean, they have a good enough team to slide into a 7 or 8 seed in the West. I think Jamal Murray's laughing. I think, honestly, we got, oh, we got Denver next. Yeah, Denver. I think that, wow. <laughs> At this point, I think you just take him. Denver really needs shooting. They got... You got to take Murray now. Emmanuel Moutier can't, can't hit anything, really. He, yeah. hits, he hits half-court shots at the buzzer to win games, but that's about it. Can't hit a standstill three-pointer. They got a they got a log jam of players in general, similar to maybe like Boston, not not maybe as high end talent, but Gallinari, Chandler coming off an injury. I think the Denver are in a situation where they're just in complete best player rebuild available. mode. You got to take the best player available. New Orleans was a bit different because they're kind of drafting a bit more on need. They have a bit more of a complete team. They were just unlucky this year. Um, Denver just need a complete overhaul. Uh, like to me, I I'd be shocked here 
if they didn't pick Jamal Murray. I'd be absolutely shocked. I'm on DraftExpress.com. I just hit the live button on the TV because I uh, wanted to make sure. Draft Express has Denver already taking Jamal Murray. I don't know if there's some kind of conspiracy going on. Maybe like Matumbo. No, yeah, but they have Jamal Murray getting drafted already. We're at commercial break. I'm, I'm on live right now. I haven't seen anything on Twitter yet, but um, wow. So Denver gets the Canadian. So, so far, Joey, what is the most shocking pick of the night? I think it's Jalen Brown. It's got to be Jalen Brown, right? Jalen Brown, without, without a doubt. Like, this is a guy that was, you know, maybe going to follow over the top 10, I heard, I heard talk. Yeah. Questions about his jump shot, his drive, every everything. And for him to go third and for Boston to keep that. <laughs> NBA draft on that had him at nine, going to Toronto. I would have been, I would have been pretty satisfied if he fall into Toronto it would almost be a, a certain lock that we should take him there um, if Jamal Murray doesn't go to Denver here it's going to be a free for all and I think someone legitimate is going to fall to the Raptors at 9 Jamal Murray wow I'm going to the clock right now <laughs> how much time is on the clock I feel like this Denver pick is taking uh Longer than the other pick. Denver always takes these Euros, it seems, recently, though. Ah, they do. They don't make Americans. So, uh, what Euros available now? The Euros, there's nobody really coming up. There's there's uh, the Turkish player for coming. But you wouldn't take him in the team. No, not at this point. I think, I think Jamal Murray is, has, to be the, has to be the pick here. And if he goes there, he has a chance to be an all-star just by putting up the numbers alone, right? Like, who's their go-to score? Gallinari, love him. He's always hurt. It's probably got to be Gallinari. He's got to lead the team now. in scoring, maybe, yeah. right? Adam Silver about to drop some knowledge. Jamal Murray going there to Denver. Go. Wow. Canadian draft pick. Shout out, Coach Cal. And I think I think that's a great fit for him. It's a good fit for him because I think he'll be able to be in a position where he can contribute right away. He's going to get a ton of playing time as shooting guard there. Wow. Denver's the only team I never thought would be to get Jamal Murray. <laughs> That's crazy. They took the best player available. I, like, this is a good pick for them. Great this is, pick for Denver. At number seven, this is an absolutely great pick. Potential all-star. Yeah. I was going into this season... You guys know what I was talking about in, 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 our, in our group chat. Not high on Jamal Murray at all. I saw the Pan Am Games. I just I, I, I saw that he wasn't an athletic guy. In the NBA these days, you need to be an athletic, especially if you're a guard. And, you know, I, I question his defense. You don't. I think he's a great defender. I think he's a tough defender. That's the thing. He's, by far, his best strength is shooting. And he's not... He can play the point. He's not going to have to play the point because they have Moutier. He provides some insurance in case he goes down. But... Well, they really need shooting in Denver, and he can he helps out because really him and Gallo is is pretty much all you have really shooting the ball. Chandler's always hurt as well. It's gonna be interesting to see if they how yeah, they get they, rid of that log jam if they, they if they have, trade someone. Yeah, they don't have much depth. They don't have. Um, you have Nurkic at the center, for Reed. Nurkic uh, and um, Jokic. Jokic, Jokic had a really good year. Yeah. Fareed will still be there. Joffrey Gallo, will burn. if he can stay healthy, is always gonna give you points. He's gonna score. You know the way Gallo can score. Will Barton, I guess, I'm not sure if he's a free agent or not, but if he is, uh, he could probably get shifted to the bench. So, they, Jalen Rose is comparing Jamal Murray to Michael Red, which is a really good Ridiculous comparison. comparison. Michael Red in his prime before those knee injuries? Michael Red before the knee injuries was a hell of a player. Arguably, one of the, at the time, one of the best shooters. Uh, Top three shooter in the NBA. Remember, he got that max deal, which was huge. I think it was like 120 million or something. Yeah, he got. It was, he got some crazy contract. But he earned that max. He played out of his mind. It just he got really unlucky with his knee. He did, yeah, Will Barton, who I forgot about, who was a sleeper for six man of the year, possibly could have won. A great score off the bench. Um, but yeah, Moody, Gary Harris, uh, Gallo, Fareed, young Jokic. A young team. Yeah, a young team. And <laughs> they couldn't take a point guard. They couldn't take a big man. So what did they do? They, they took a swing man. I yeah. think it's. Maybe the best possible pick for them, like we said, especially at this. You know, and another thing, I don't think there's any point guards available now. Normally, with all of these drafts in recent years, you see a lot of point guard heavy drafts. 
how many point guards are really in this draft that you can say are legitimate lock picks? Yeah, just Murray from Washington is next. Um, did you take Murray? We got him next. And then also uh, Wade Baldwin, who I like, who I have Chicago taking after they traded Derrick Rose. Um, look at look at the smile on his face. I'll be happy. You know he's gonna get playing time. Good for him. That's the future of Canada basketball. And, I'm, and he is for sure. And I, I know I read a lot of stuff also and, and listened to some podcasts about Marquise Chris slipping about where he should, coming into the this season. He wasn't even really on draft boards, and uh, you know ended up really creeping up into the top three recently. And now he's falling back maybe to reality. You got Sacramento. If Mar- Marquise Chris falls at Toronto, what do you think about that? Really, the only Sacramento next, eh? It's interesting. It's an interesting situation if he falls to us. Without a doubt. The Raptors need a power forward. I would not be mad at that. Even though I think he Could use some athleticism in the front court as well, right? Yeah, he's a guy that's going to just give you... He's interesting because of his athleticism and the upside that he provides. If he can develop like kind of a back to the basket scoring game, he has the size to do that. He could be a scary player if he develops a decent mid range post game. Like I said, the Raptors. Like kinda... I said, you want to see a better rebounder. Yeah. Um, but the you know the Raptors, like I said, with all these guys getting reached for, you, you see Jamal Murray falling a little bit, right? Like we thought he was going to be a top five pick, not falling too much, and maybe Chris comes, a guy who you know, a lot of people had in the top three. Um, could be a really, really good pickup for the Raptors. But the thing is, with Masai Ujiri, does he want to wait? We know that he wants a guy that's going to come in immediately and, and and give the Raptors something. Can Chris give you something in, in your first year, uh, You know, fresh off the Eastern Conference Final? The weird thing for the Raptors here is it's all freshmen. Whoever they're going to take is most likely going to be a freshman. unless They, they take Poto, maybe? It's a bit of a reach. I can see it, though. I could definitely see with, it. With Bismack not being there, maybe? Poto's weird because you can't play him alongside Jokic. No. You cannot do it. You can bring him off the bench as a but you shot blocker rebounder. You do need a backup center, right? He's a guy that could just help Jonas and alleviate his minutes. We don't have if Bismarck goes. We you have nobody center. really, right? There's like, no one there. You have uh, Nagera, right? And I don't know if you want to give him minutes, block. right? Yeah, it depends how much faith you have in him. I don't have much, but I don't think he's he's not really that capable of a player. Well, look at the Kings picks recently. Collie Stein, Stoskis, Macklemore, Robinson, Biombo, Cousins, Evans. Like, not bad picks. A lot of those guys aren't with them anymore. We yeah. saw that, right? Like, Biombo got traded on draft day. I thought Biombo Stoskis. got picked by the Hornets. I thought he got picked by the Hornets, too, but they, they, they traded him instantly on oh, draft must have been, day. Yeah, must have been. Kings, who do you have them taking? Chris? Chris. No. A guard. Murray. Yeah. Wow. So now they have a huge log jam. I they have know. four big men. Yeah. So I don't know where he's going to find playing time for this guy. Is Cousins on the block, Zane? Probably. Wow. It has to be. It has to be. Cauley Stein, Cauley Stein can ball, though. Cauley Stein, is, Cauley Stein is a Tyson Chandler leg. Like he's gonna, yeah, that's exactly what he is, right? He's much better than I thought he would be. Um, I just With him and Cousins, I just don't see where he's going to play. And also the guy who escapes me, the Greek guy they got from Memphis last, Kostas Kufas, right? Like they have lots of big guys there now. So, well, Raptors on the clock. <laughs> you win a while for this. Who do you, with, with who's available? This is interesting. Who, who do you like right now? I like Sabonis. I think Sabonis really? is the guy you take here. You, you have him, and I think he can play alongside Jonas. And with him and Jonas playing, what, the one thing that you're going to get with him... Well, Chris being drafted by the Suns in a trade, possibly. So I know that the Suns... Yeah, they're going to keep both Bender and Chris. Yeah. So that, that, the question is I know that Phoenix has late picks. So Phoenix, Phoenix has at least two pick. other picks. So I think they're, gonna, they're definitely going to send one other pick in this. So they're going to trade down. And get someone else. Maybe they get someone like Teletovich in the deal. It's not a bad situation for them if they are to come out of this draft with Ben Durant. Like I said, I, I, I like Phoenix taking Chris at that at that original pick. So now maybe you build, you take a front court. I know that Chandler wanted out. They said that from from after, you know, pretty much after he signed that deal. Did not like the direction of the team. He liked yeah. the contract they gave him, but didn't like the direction of the team. So now you have Len and then maybe Chris with Bender. That's a pretty good young front court moving forward. Yeah. I like... If they're able to snag both of them and just give up late picks, 
this is a really look good at, draft. Look at that. You get Leonard. They're coming out with an A plus rating if they're able to snag both of them. You get I want to see who they give up. Uh, Maybe it's a future pick. Maybe it's. It's players. definitely going to be a first from this year. But. So, how many picks do they have this year? Uh, let me check this out. I'm pretty sure that they have two. I think they have maybe like a 15 pick. Rashard Lewis. I don't know about that. Jalen Rose good player. Yeah, I don't think he has that, that three yet. Yeah, no, he he doesn't. Have, Rashard Lewis had that finesse. So Phoenix right? has also the 13 pick. Okay. So you figure that 13 pick's going for number eight, and then they give away a player in that deal. If, if you're only moving up five spots, I don't know how much really you're going to give a, up, it right? It might be like a role player. Um, I'm going to go through the lineup. Maybe Brandon Knight. We're on, oh, so we got Chandler, P.J. Tucker, Eric Bledsoe, Brandon Knight, Alex Len's not going in that deal. Uh, Toledovic, T.J. Warren, Devin Booker. Uh, it's Brandon Knight possible? I can't know. Brandon Knight's not going in that deal. That Sacramento would really love Brandon Knight, but I don't think I he'd get him. Probably a PJ Tucker moving. Yeah, that that makes that seems sense. like it might not be enough though. Maybe Toledovic goes in the deal. They could really use, Sacramento could use a shooter. They could use someone that could stretch the floor. Because Sacramento, I, d- I did just read traded um, Bellinelli yeah. right before the draft, yeah. so that opens up a spot for a shooter. Toronto Raptors on the clock. Zane, all I'm thinking about right now is when they took... Uh, Vill- no, not, not Bruno. I'm going way back. When they took uh, Villanueva. But and we have Stephen A. Smith losing his mind because they drafted Bosch, I think, the year before. You know what? Number nine is a lucky number for the Raptors. Our last two picks. DeMar and... Tracy McGrady. T-Mac. Okay. Those are two solid... Hey! Nice picks. <laughs> so, uh... I'm liking this pick at nine. I think we're gonna get some bonus, and I think he's gonna. I don't. I don't. Like, if right they take some the bonus, I will be an unhappy person. Zane. So I, already, I will not I be know, happy. You want Scal? You want uh, Scal here? Do you get? I, I, guess, I, I think Scal is just too big a risk, and I just don't think he can contribute right away. Raptors need a guy who's going to come in right off the get-go and contribute, and Sabonis is the only guy on okay. the board right Let me now. say what I say about Scott. The thing I like is, like I told you before, the last time there was a guy that was in the top two or three that fell this far down the draft, big man, Andre Drummond. He was supposed to go right after Anthony Davis. Look what happened to Drummond. He was supposed to go two and then one, I want to say eight, right before the Raptors, something like that. And we saw what happened to Andre Drummond. Scal, there was a lot of good players at Kentucky. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable. He used to have the ball in his hands. Worst case scenario... I see him kind of like um, Indiana's uh, power forward Turner. we just saw, Miles Turner. Worst case scenario, he was like a Miles Turner. A worst case, Miles Turner. Yeah, like I don't know. Miles Turner came in and what, pretty much what could he do? Really shoot and grab some rebounds, right? Scal can shoot. Best case scenario is like a, is an Aldridge for me. Whoa. I think I think he's too timid. I think he's very like lackadaisical type player. I just don't think he has the. He's not good at one thing. He's just okay at everything. You know, with that wingspan, though, protecting the paint, too, for the Raptors at the power forward position. But do you think he, he has a toughness, though, to hang in the NBA? He doesn't have the... He's not the toughest guy, that's for sure, but... You know, the wingspan, 7'2 and a half. 6'11", without shoes. But, Sorry, with shoes. Like, this is, this is a big dude we're talking about here, Zane. So... A thirty-five inch vertical, so seven foot tall. Neither guy, neither guy can defend. But the one reason I think Sabonis is Scal's a much better defender, bigger wingspan. I, I need rebound. If you want, if you're talking rebounding and a guy that's gonna grab you nine, ten boards a game in the NBA, that's the guy you want to pick. You're gonna go with Sabonis. It's the safer pick. Raptors. Yeah, Jalen Rose predicting an interior big. I'm going the same way. Scal, Jay Billis has him as the seventh best available player right now. I think Scal's the guy, Zane. I've been calling this for a while. Usually I'm right with the Raptors pick. And we got, we got the commish. No. The, no. No. He's not gonna play. No, I don't like that. I am. He's not gonna play. Not a high ceiling. I don't like this, especially no, with the, no. the the new NBA. Look, we've got a Raptors fan giving thumbs down. Ron, uh, shout out to Ron. I know. I know he has faith in Masai. I don't oh, like this pick. I don't. I'm like disappointed this in Masai in this one. You know what? This is the pretty much Zane. Honestly, he's 
he's a a poor man's Jonas. Very poor man. Jonas. Yeah, like a very. He's um, he, he's stronger though than Jonas, I think. When he uh, came in the uh, league. A guy you said earlier in the podcast, who I think is a really good comparison, is uh, Costa Kufos. Yeah, that's a fair comparison for him. Um, I mean, if he's able to come in and contribute right away, it'd be good for the Raptors. I just don't think he'll fit alongside Jonas. Well, he averaged seventeen points, nine rebounds last year. That's incredible. In college, that's those are NBA numbers. He's a big. Like you guy. don't see college guys do that. Yeah, he's a big guy though. I know that he's much better than than Sabonis, and I know you like Sabonis, but much better. A bigger guy, a better rebounder, a much better defender. But he looks good. But the only thing is, like you said, with Jonas there, what do you... And it's funny because I just talked about when the Raptors draft... Where's Stephen A when you need him? I'd say when the Raptors had Bosch and they drafted Charlie V, the exact same position, franchise player. Jonas, arguably their franchise... Well, there he is their franchise player going forward. Chris Kamen. That's actually a better comparison than what I said with Casa Kufos. I wouldn't even be mad if he turned into a Chris Kamen. I just don't. Chris Kamen on the Clippers was pretty good. Yeah, Chris Kamen was a hell of a player. Like he could rebound and he could block shots with the best. He won. You think he was on an All Star team as well? He's one of the better defenders in the league. He also won that O three draft. Yeah. Um, It's just. I guess it's. I'm not happy with this pick. I can't say I'm thrilled. I just think he's. the the Raptors. He's nothing, nothing. I just I don't think that he can play alongside Jonas. He definitely can. I think he's can't. an offensive specialist, and I just don't. No, think he's a great defender. Yeah. His one of his strengths. In, So the Raptors do go international. Let's not get this confused. I'm pretty sure he's Austrian. He is Austrian, yes. Not, but, but he's played two years of college ball. And he's proven himself in the NCAA. So that has to be worth something. It's not like you're picking the international guy that's completely unproven. Um, it's A power forward would have been nice though, right? I really thought we should have chose Savonis. I really thought Savonis... What does Savonis give you that he doesn't? I think Savonis is a better rebounder than Portal is. I don't. He, no. he averaged 9.5 in the well, Pac-12. 9.5 rebounds. He's, he's, yeah, he's a really good rebounder. I think he he's averaged a, 9. Sorry, Portal averaged 9.5. That's I think, what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. but Savonis averaged 11 in college. Okay, well, he probably played more minutes. I don't know. I, I, well, I, I think that Portal's game translates a lot better to the NBA than... Than um, Savonis does. He's a better offensive player. He's a stronger player. You could argue that they're almost similarly skilled offensively as well. Like I don't think Savonis can drive as well as he can. Probably better post up when he loses the, when he loses his pivot foot. But honestly, Pip, Porto's a bigger player. He's a he's a bigger, better version of Savonis, I think. He's got to be what seven foot. Yeah, he's seven. Seven. I think he's seven, seven one and two sixty. Right. Like he's like I said, he's, he's, he's Jonas, guy, but he's a bigger Jonas when he came in the league. Yeah. And he, he he looks like he moves. He's not as awkward as Jonas looks. And I've been one of Jonas's biggest critics, but he really proved me wrong this season. Like a lot of people, and I, I he's definitely he's ready to so play next year. His ceiling is not that high. I don't know let's, about that. Let's be correct. I don't know about that, Zane. The only thing is with the with the new NBA, really, right? Like, and the centers aren't really. He's gonna have to develop a mid range jumper. Jonas never did. So. Well, Jonas has a mid-range jumper. Uh, yeah, he does. Better than the average center, but nothing special. It's not his go-to move, but he can definitely stick it if people give it to him. It is, it is tough, though. Jack Armstrong, I, I think he likes this pick. I don't know if he's allowed to not like the pick, though. It's a weird situation, because whoever you're picking here, it's kind of like... I don't, like, with this draft, Joey, I don't think there's that much variance between number 9 and number, like, 15. Like, all the guys that are going to go in the next... They have some breaking news right now. Wow, two... What's going on with this feed? I am live right now. I already have two picks that have been made. Okay, so Milwaukee just went. Biggest surprise of the draft by far. Guess who they just took. Biggest surprise of the draft. Hold on. 
They took a guard. They didn't. I'm gonna give you another hint, which will give it away. He might be 30. Thon? Yes! No way! <laughs> Thon Macker, I have Thon Maker right here um, at 10. Are they trying to make the, the biggest starting five of and all I, time? It looks like it. So that's official. It, it Well, it's on Draft Express. I'm gonna put that up right now. It's on right here on this audio version that I'll have a little bit on YouTube. There won't be much I don't footage of it. That. Yep, I have Thon Macker, and they were right about uh, Jamal Murray before. So, Thon Macker 10, and then Orlando already made their pick as well at 11, which is even more weird. They took your boy, Sabonis. I don't know if, if Draft Express has some insider information that they're know. posting Maybe online. Maybe he's a speculative pick. I want to see the reaction now that we can see this. Well, I'll tell you what, they're not thinking Thon Macker now this is live. Wow. Yeah, well, these guys picking Deontay Davis, Henry Ellison, not not Thon Maker, that's for sure. I can't believe it. This is a guy they talked about maybe sliding over the first round with questions about his age. Wow, Jay Billis. Jay Billis predicted it. That's what happened with, with Giannis, right? Like, he... He went, I'm pretty sure, 10, 11, or 12. Yeah, but he was projected at that point. You know, Ron Baker was projected in the late first round. Yeah. Wow. So where would you stick him? Would you play him at center? No, he's, he's coming off the bench, that's for sure. Wow. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> I wouldn't write right. the predictions right. <laughs> Wow. This is ridiculous. What's going on in our group right now? Because I have my phone on airplane mode. Is anybody tweet? Is anybody texting no, in our no auto blogger? We pick. need to. We need Wait. to. Te text Don right now. Shout out to Don at ATB News because he wanted some picks. My phone's on airplane mode. Send, let Don know that Thon, Thon Maker just went. Wow. Moved to Ontario at 17 years old. We know that he played at, he played at Orangeville. I never got the catch game I wanted to. His mixtapes in is legendary. His, his YouTube mixtape is legendary. How does this game, though, translate to the NBA? Is he strong enough? Well, I, I think he's more like, he's a very finesse type player. Like, he, he prefers playing a face-up game. But he has the size to do serious damage in the low post. Like, his size is unbelievable. Like, Look. he's seven foot two, Insane length. In, insane length. And it's just... It, it would be interesting to see how he transitions from high school basketball to the NBA. I think there's going to be a huge learning curve for him. I think they're going to have to stash him. I think you're going to see him ride the ride the pine on Jason Kidd's team for a couple of years. Really? Before he gets serious playing time. You think he's going to get time next year, though? Maybe next year. Or you think year. he'll get the Bruno I don't treatment? Think, I think he's going to get the Bruno treatment. I think you could probably see him in the D-League next year. Really? Yeah. I have a feeling the kid's going kid's gonna to bring him up. It's, well, who's, this is their start, who's their starting center? Would it be... Uh, it's Monroe Henson, right now. Henson and Monroe at power forward. Yeah, and you got Jabari Parker. Jabari Parker. You're honest and Middleton, right? Yeah. Is that what they're doing? Oh, yeah. Well, they're going to start Jabari at the four. and then start, Middleton at the three? Start um, Monroe at center. Um, Giannis at point? Giannis at point. Well, if you run Giannis at point, it becomes a really interesting team because you they're can huge. say Giannis, Middleton... Let's just say Maker makes the starting lineup long term. Jabari and then Thon Maker, which is a massive. So Jabari and Monroe, which is a massive. And all those guys can shoot. Yeah. Giannis has even improved their shooting game, but all those guys can shoot. Parker, Middleton, a great three point shooter. shooter. Um, oh, I wouldn't say deadly though. They're not. Middleton's two, probably yes. the best. Yeah. Maker, and Parker Maker, as well. Maker can shoot from what we've seen. Wow, how do you like? This is a typical Jason Kidd pick. A massive guy with the biggest wingspan. I was talking about Carissa Ball. Let's talk Australian basketball coming up. Dante Exum. We got Exum. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Bob Baker. Baker. Delavadova. Yeah, Delavadova. I didn't want to mention him. Um. Patty Mills. Patty Mills. That's a decent it's a decent, it's a decent team. Are they ahead of Canada on the curve? No. I would say no. But I'm biased. They're pretty, <laughs> they're pretty good. 
Sounds like our boy Francis, if I may say so. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh my god. Can we take a quick break? Uh, Orlando's on the clock, but are they really on the clock? Because, like I said, I have Orlando here on uh, Draft Express, and they have some bonus already with the pick. We're take a quick break. Regroup after this crazy first half of the first round and come back when we return on the block. All right, we're back. 23 seconds for Orlando Did on the block. The NBA the live podcast. The well, Sabonis is what Draft Express is saying. They haven't been wrong yet. So it looks like they're going to take Sabonis. Like I said, I think they need shooting. But they're going to predict it two picks ahead of time. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go on a limb here and say scout. You're going against what's been right so far. I think they have some inside information. I'm going with Sabonis because that's what they have here. It doesn't really matter. I don't really know. I don't know if I like the pick. They're not the best offensive team, Orlando. They, they have a lot of raw players. Alfred Payton hasn't developed how they liked. That's for sure. Can't shoot. I think he's Never just will be able to. He, yeah, he's going to be. I don't think a, he's a guy who could start. He can make plays. He can dribble. He can. He can defend. A he's a he's a really good defender, and I think that's going to be his calling card in the NBA. Um, Oladipo is a hell of a player. That's the thing. Oladipo, Oladipo, Oladipo you give him the range for the point guard, right? Yeah, Oladipo is a guy who's going to make strides. You're going to see him getting better and better and making a serious impact in the NBA. Oladipo kind of reminds me of a, like, to a lesser extent, obviously, like a, a Dwayne Wade kind of guy. He plays a lot like him. He plays a lot like Dwayne Wade. So you're saying Sabonis is here. Yeah, only because that's what I... I don't think they should, but I think I that's... say Scal. No. Yeah, see, the, the, this site has it down. Arvin is Sabonis in the house! Lithuania, show it Yeah, living the life. It would have been, to be honest, I would have liked to see Wade Baldwin there. Shout out to his girl. Good for him. I thought it was his sister. Uh, could be. She looks tall. Like She looks like she's like legit 6'9". Lithuanian flags. We know the Raptors do the Lithuanian nights whenever there's a Lithuanian player in town. Hey. This is going to be the Orlando night. And you know what, Joey? A lot of these... NBA guys with uh, who come into the league with their fathers having played in the NBA and having long careers, they usually turn out pretty good. Do they? Clay Thompson, Steph Curry. Recent guys, yeah. Recent guys, they've been good. Patrick Ewing Jr., not so much. Larry Nance Jr. is a good player. Uh, I don't know what Larry Nance is. I heard Lakers, uh, Lakers reporter uh, Mike Tudor talking about him today that he was good. He's a bench guy, right? He's a hustle guy to come off the bench. He's a dunker. Yep. I want to say, so you, you think you'd rather have Sabonis than, than Poto? Yeah, he's just such a good rebounder, this guy. I love the way he rebounds in basketball. I think this is a good pick. Doesn't get off the ground, though, that much. Not a, he lacks athleticism. But and yeah. strength. Nice jumper. He's tough, though. Like He's like a, one of those gritty... I can see him being like one of those gritty NBA players that just... One of those like ten and ten guys for his entire career. And if I was to say, if I was to give an NBA comparison on him, I would say maybe um, maybe an uh, an Anderson Verjean type. Really? Well, Verjean never really had any offensive skill. No, but he was a good rebounder. Yeah. He was a good defender. Greedy, greedy, greedy defender, and he's tough. That's what you want from him. I'd say more like a Scola when, when, when his prime kind of thing. He's more gritty. Not as skilled as Scola, but he's much more gritty. I think he's that skill. I think he's probably the best post scorer in the, in the draft. Not the same passing game as his dad, though. He's got good footwork. He can't, well, his dad arguably one of the best passing big men in the last 20 years. Ever. I don't know about ever, but he, he's up there. Apparently, Arvidas was like the beast. greatest ever in his when prime. In, his, in prime. his prime, how old was he when he came to the league? Was he thirty? How about that voice? You gotta make his dad proud. Good for him. It, it, this must be a really pr- proud moment for uh, Big Daddy Arvidas Sabonis. You think you think that uh, you think his son has a chance to? Is he going to be the best Lithuanian in the league ahead of JV no, at any point? Now you're talking crazy, Joey. Okay, good. Oh, he's I, not. He's not going to just because JV. He's a good player. Yeah. Um, I 
What a big guy. His son is not nearly as big. Doesn't He's have the same size. Yeah. Yeah, there we so the father son combos that we talked about Hall of Famers. Um Arvidas you know Sabonis, what? Patrick Ewing, Bill Bill Walton. Luke Walton and Patrick Ewing Jr., like I said, not great players by any stretch of the imagination in the league. I see I see DeMontis Sabonis as best case scenario, like a maybe like a twelve and ten guy if he starts. Right? I don't think he's ever gonna be an all star, especially so with the big man dying out. I think I think the very job comparison is fair. But more skilled than than very a bit more skilled, a bit Ver- better post game, um, but similar style. Like they're gonna do the gritty stuff, the rebounding. They're gonna they're gonna give you a hard fought forty eight minutes, right? So Atlanta's pick goes to Utah in that trade. Um, what would you say? I don't know. What is what does uh, Utah do with this pick? They picked up George Hill. Isn't this Utah's pick goes to Atlanta? You know? Sure, yes. Yeah, so Atlanta would be picking here for Utah. So I think now you take Scal. Or you take Deontay Davis. Draft Express once again beats us to the punch. Um, Torian Prince, small forward from Baylor, a senior going 12th overall. Oh. Can't, can't agree with that one. I, I don't, I don't Most drafts had him going late. A bit of a reach. Six foot six, six eleven wingspan, Torian Prince. Great defender, great rebounder. Um, Atlanta's losing a lot of players. Al Horford's gonna walk. They already lost um, Jeff Teague. They need some scoring, and uh, you're not gonna get that with Torian Prince. Also, let's look at the guys that fell. Scal continues to fall. Where do you think he goes? Does he get to 20? I'm really interested to I see. Think, I think Phoenix... Well, Phoenix are giving up the pick for um, the 13. So that pick is going to... Um, Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah. So Sacramento are getting another chance. So they could potentially have another chance, but you don't see them picking Scal there. No, I see them taking the point guard from uh, Washington, um, Dejounte Murray, probably best. Well, the the next best point guard in, on the in the draft. Yeah. Like we said, Rondo's gone, and Collison has those issues. So they, I think point guard is their glaring weakness right now. And to me, that's a pick they make. And now Chicago would be after them, and after Chicago trade Derrick Rose in that huge trade, what does Chicago do? Really, they need they could use help everywhere except that shooting guard, right? I think they need to take the best player. I think they they might even you might even see them get rid of Jimmy Butler. Now. Really? Not here, but I think eventually. In this off season, you think he gets gone? In this off season, I think he gets. Wow. But then that would be complete rebuild, though. Yeah, that would be fishing for the top pick next year, essentially, yeah. right? Joking, Noah's gone. Noah's gone. You, um, Powell's gone, right? Powell's gone. Noah's gone. So, uh, you, you, you got to say the Bulls are going to look for some front court help. Um, Atlanta here... Well, they, they, they picked up uh, Lopez in that deal, right, Robin yeah. Lopez? Yeah, but instead of just speculating about Chicago, I think here here you probably take... You probably take Scow here. But you're saying to John Tabor, or, Prince. Uh, Prince. Yeah. What a surprise. What do they know that we don't? <laughs> How does Josh Express know this? Bro? I don't know. Do they have a guy like in the back talking to? Uh, you know what? There must be Silver before he comes out, or what? I was gonna say they have someone there, which they do anyways. But even then, there's not a there's not like a minute or thirty second delay on the TV. That's for sure. A couple seconds. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be like um, a Demari Carroll kind of guy. Greedy defender can develop the three. Really rugged player. And that's Utah. Well, this pick story is going to Atlanta. But that's a defensive pick right there. And Atlanta, I guess, after after seeing LeBron James just torch them, maybe this is what maybe this is what they're going for. Yeah, well, their version of a LeBron stopper. They're looking for athleticism on the wings, clearly. Um, that that's also where they're lacking. So they have Corver and they have Ken Bainsbar. But other than those two, losing Carroll was huge for them. Yeah. 
So they, you, they're looking to have that defense especially. So from that standpoint, from a need standpoint, this makes sense. Um, the, the thing is, a lot of they're they're putting a lot of trust in Dennis Schroeder now. They are moving forward, and he hasn't really developed a shot. They yet, got right? rid of Teague, so Schroeder is going to have you know the keys to the car next season. He's going to run the offense, uh, whether Horford's there or not. You would assume Millsap is still there, but Schroeder is going to have to you know show his worth and show that he is capable to be a starting point guard of the league. He's yet to prove it. I think I think he can do it. I'm a big fan of Schroeder, but he has to you know show. Show Atlanta, or show the NBA he can do it for 82 games and start on an NBA team. Do you think Atlanta trades uh, Millsap and goes into rebuild mode? I think you keep Millsap. you got to take the same mindset that Sacramento takes, where you keep him unless you get an absolutely amazing trade that you can't turn down. Whether that's future, future picks or legitimate stars that you're getting in return. Because... Let's be honest, Cousins and Millsap, those kind of guys are perennial all-stars. And I don't see them falling off any time in the next, you know, three, four years. Even longer. Well, Horford so, is just as good as gone. So you got Millsap, Bazemore, Schroeder, um, Corver, and I don't know who else you're going to start there. Whoa! Huge trade! Huge trade! Serge Ibaka gets straight to Orlando for who? Sabonis and Oladipo. Whoa. Why would they want Oladipo though? I think Orlando just got fleeced in that deal. But why the hell? Is Oladipo in the deal? Is that confirmed? Yeah, Oladipo. This is a big trade. But why, how is Oladipo going to fit in Oklahoma City? There's six men. The point guard. Well, you put Westbrook at the two. This is a massive this trade. Is, this is a terrible deal for the Thunder. Sorry, sorry, for the Magic. This they shouldn't give up a Baca. I mean, they, they shouldn't give up a Oladipo, sorry. I agree. I think the That's a moves, terrible deal. I just think it's a weird trade for... I, I know they're getting Oladipo. Who's if the, you give away Alfred Payton that deal, I, I, I really oh, don't care. Oh, no, but then Oklahoma City would never do that. Why not? Alfred Payton for Serge Ibaka? Come on. What's Serge Ibaka in this league right now? I talked about He's, he's not the same good. defender. He's I don't still, think so. He's not used would you, who would you rather have, Oladipo or Ibaka? Oladipo. Exactly. But I wouldn't want Oladipo on Oklahoma City. It makes no sense. He makes no sense on that team. Who's your shooting guard? Oladipo. Ro- Roberson, Oladipo. Oladipo now. He can't shoot though. He can. Well, he's he really better, developed. But you can't say he's a good shooter. He's gonna if, get. Okay, now if you're Oladipo, you're spending the entire summer in the gym shooting threes. Sabonis can't even say anything. He can't believe he's going to Oklahoma City. He might be in the finals next year. I I can't believe that. Frees up cap space. But then they so, get Oladipo so back. he's going to start, Joey. Is he? Yeah. Who's going to start over him? Cantor. I think you start Cantor. Maybe oh, him on. and Cantor, to be honest, are pretty similar players. No, offensive offensive skilled rebounder. rebounder. Cantor's a great rebounder, not Zane. You know that. Not you agree. know he is. Not a great he, rebounder. He averages 10. He's okay. He's already be he the best. He could start. He could start. Keep Cantor coming off the bench. I, I, I can't believe how Oklahoma City did this to the Orlando Magic. Well, what was worse? Is what was worse? The Tobias Harris trade or this trade? This is a weird trade because I just don't. I don't I'm trying to picture all of these was in a fit. I, I I could see it happening, but <laughs> it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird. I can't believe that. Uh, this this is uh, a good draft. <laughs> Joey, I don't this know about the draft, draft, but that, that that trade, I am at a loss for words more than when Thon Maker got drafted. Oladipo is their franchise player. Like, what's Orlando, what are Magic fans saying right now? I'm pissed if I'm a Magic fan. What do you want Serge Ibaka for? 
because you have Vucevic there. I get it. You you pair arguably a tough guy with a soft yeah, player, Harris, but, I mean, but you also Gordon. have Aaron Gordon, right? Aaron Gordon, that small forward now. Oh my, Aaron Gordon's got to shift to the small forward. And now they got to resign Fournier for sure. Really quickly, let's talk about the Suns and Kings trade. So the Suns do get Marquise Chris, who I originally had going to them. Um, so they, they walk away with Chris, and they walk away. The Suns, the Suns are looking great in this draft. They are because they, this, they're not giving up that much. The Kings traded thirteen and twenty eight. They get Bogdanovich as well. Yeah, we were, we speculated maybe it was going to be Teledovich, but Bogdanovich goes. And um, thirteen and twenty eight is you know twenty eight to twenty eight pick. Most likely that's not going to pan out for you. No. Right, you're coming out of this draft with Chris and Bender. Does Phoenix look better for the future than the Boston Celtics right now? Because both young teams with a lot of players, like look. you could make a case. Like now, like if Len can stay healthy and like that team, Devin with Booker guards, with the back, Devin have, Booker and Bledsoe, Devin Booker could ball. Like that team's looking good now. They're still really young. They don't have. I don't think they have a single veteran on the team outside of Ten Chandler. Would you rather have Devin Booker or Bradley Beal going forward? Are they both healthy? Yeah. Bradley Beal. Really? Yes. How come? He's better. He's just a lot better. Sun's about to pick. Yorgos Papianis, a center from Greece. I don't. I think this is kind of like a Bruno pick. Nobody knows who this guy is right now. I have no now. idea who this is. He's sitting in the upper deck. We almost had upper deck seats to this draft save. Hey, he's sitting far back. Speaking of. Oh, and he's going to the Kings to log with Kosakoufis, another fellow Greek man. We've got to take a quick break. 7 2 2 40. I'm gonna, we're going to be back really quick. Zane Shaw, Joe Ferrari here on the block. Who is this guy? <laughs> we're going to find out. 